Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about some uh, terminology around HD or hierarchical deterministic wallets. This is the sort of modern wallet standard that's been around for a couple years now that most people are used to using. And this is that type of wallet where you uh, have a 12 to 24 word English backup phrase that you type into your wallet or that's generated for you when you create a wallet. And it actually generates all of your addresses and your private keys in a sort of predictable pattern, which means you only have to use this one backup. This is a really cool technology that's made uh, adoption easier for new users and made backups safer and more secure. But there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to this technology, and there's a lot of terminology that might be a little bit confusing if you don't understand how it works. So this video is not going to be a deep dive into how these wallets actually work, but it's going to be a glossary of terminology that will help you better understand this technology. So first, let's start off by talking some about some of the uh, BIPs or Bitcoin improvement proposals that are associated with HD wallets. So there's three pretty big ones that really have started off this technology. And the first is BIP32. This is the original standard uh, for generating deterministic sets of key pairs from a single cryptographic seed. So in the very early, early days of Bitcoin, you would have a wallet that randomly generated a bunch of private keys and associated addresses and stored them in a wallet data file. Uh, your wallet would start off by generating maybe 100 address uh, key pairs. And if you used all of those addresses, it would randomly generate some more. And that would actually invalidate your old backup because it would have a bunch of uh, new addresses that weren't in that backup. So that's a little bit cumbersome for new users and for people that don't necessarily understand how addresses work. And what this new standard does is it allows generating uh, a whole tree of key pairs from one single cryptographic seed. So you create one backup and now you have an infinite tree of available addresses to use. The next bit that's really important is BIP39. And this is the specification I think is really interesting and one of the cool innovations in the space. And this is the specification that takes the cryptographic seed and turns it into uh, 12 to 24 English words that serve as a backup for that seed. So if you've ever dealt with, say, uh, traditional paper wallets that have one key pair on them, that private key is stored in what's called WIF or wallet import format. And, uh, you know, WIF key pairs, they're encoded in base 58, and it kind of looks like a string of gibberish, really. If you're not careful with those uh, kinds of encoded private keys, you can mess up and end up with a backup that's not actually valid. And so instead of storing the keys, uh, the seed for all of your keys generated in this HD tree, uh, you actually are able to just store 12 to 24 English words. Now for end users, that's a lot, uh, a lot easier to handle and you know, not have an issue with screwing up a backup than it is if you're dealing with you know, a base 58 or hex encoded seed. So I think that's an innovation that's really made it easy for new users that aren't necessarily technical to adopt this technology. Now the next important bit is BIP44. And what this improvement proposal did is it extended the work of BIP32 to support multi-currency and multi-account wallets from a single seed. So now with this technology, uh, if you've ever used a multi-currency wallet like Coinomi, uh, this is the bit that enables that. So you can start with a single wallet seed and you can actually have this one seed support multiple cryptocurrencies. So you can have one seed that uh, serves as a backup for a Bitcoin Cash, an Ethereum wallet, a Bitcoin wallet, a Litecoin wallet, and many, many others. 
uh, any cryptocurrency can actually register a new uh, part of this standard. So, you know, there are thousands of cryptocurrencies out there and many of them use BIP44 for generating HD wallets. You can also have multiple accounts uh, using the same coin. So for example, with BIP44, you could have a Bitcoin Cash wallet for your personal use and another one for business use generated from the same backup seed but kept completely separate from one another. And that's another really nice innovation to have when it comes to wallet management. Now, let's talk a little bit about the key format and some of the uh, terminology with um, private keys and public keys when it comes to these HD wallets. So a YouTube viewer asked me, what's the difference between a BIP32 root key and a BIP32 extended private key? Both of them start with that XPRV prefix. So in order to understand this, let's remember that HD wallets are a tree structure. So you start with what's called a root key that is the top of the tree for uh, those address key pairs. So your root key is the very top node of the tree, and that's used to generate an infinite number of child uh, keys or branches on that tree. So uh, one notated as a BIP32 extended private key is just essentially uh, one of those children or branches on that tree. So again, the root key is the very top of that tree structure. That's the key that starts off the generation of all of the uh, later generations, children, grandchildren, and so on, on that uh, key pair tree. Now, what is an extended private key? Uh, so with traditional Bitcoin key pairs, you have a private key that is 256 bits of data that is randomly generated. And from that, you derive a public key using elliptic curve cryptography. And through some hashing and encoding, you arrive at your final address. Well, the 256-bit private key still stands in HD wallets, but there's some additional data as well. So the first thing that an extended private key contains is 256 bits of key data that is used as that private key. However, there's an additional 256 bits in that extended private key that contains what's called a chain code. And essentially what that chain code is used for is making the addresses that are generated on this tree appear random to outsiders of from that wallet. So you wouldn't want uh, on this tree one private key to make it super easy to predict all of the other keys like siblings on that tree. And so the chain code makes it so these uh, other addresses that are sort of related uh, on a part of this tree to appear random even though they are in fact generated in this deterministic fashion. So when you take the 256 bits of the key data and the 256 bit chain code, you get a 512 bit uh, extended private key. Now there's also an extended public key format. It's a slightly different size. So the first part is the uh, bits for the extended public key and then they also contain a chain code. We're not gonna go into all of the details of how this works in this video, but I think that should give you a better idea of the terminology and distinguishing between things like root keys and other extended keys on your tree. So as always, there is an article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video. I again want to thank my YouTube viewer for posing the question of what is the difference between a root key and an extended private key. I'm always looking for suggestions. I'm here to help you learn and understand how cryptocurrencies work. So always feel free to reach out to me on YouTube, social media, or on my website, and I would be happy to help you out. Again, as always, thank you very much for viewing, and if you like this content and find it useful, please consider supporting me on Patreon through Spreadshirt Apparel or cryptocurrency donations on my website.